Hey, here we are. Tonight we're going to be shooting this new Hyundai Ioniq 5, the new electric vehicle from Hyundai. So here we are, we're in the back here. We're going to do some light painting. We're going to get these lights off. See, there's quite a bit of them here. We'll be able to turn those off. And then we're going to do some light painting here. It's going to take a couple exposures, one for the bottom half of the car, one for the top, and then we'll do some with the lights and maybe some interiors as well. So we're shooting with the Ice Light 2, and I actually have it attached to a monopod, which means I can get a little further away from the car. I can extend it if I want. Uh, also, with these lights, I covered these up with, uh, with black tape, because these lights with these numbers can really influence the photo quite a bit, and they can get in the way. All right, so taking this into Lightroom, uh, kind of the first step is selecting some of the exposures, kind of tagging which ones. What I usually do is I uh, usually just uh, hit the five key to give it five stars so I know which ones I want uh, to blend in Photoshop. So I'm just going through some of the exposures, making sure I have the front, I have the side, I have the top as well, uh, and a wheel exposure and some lights. Once I select those, I'll open those in Photoshop. And a good next step to take is really kind of naming your layers. So obviously they all kind of look the same from the small thumbnails, uh, going through each one by turning each one off and going through one by one to see which ones are which is really gonna help in terms of uh, which edits to do, which layers to work on and so on. So looking through this now, what I did is I moved the background layer. I put that on the bottom. Uh, now the four that are on the top, I'm gonna turn these off here and just look at these one by one and we'll change the blend mode to lighten. That'll allow me to see all of the light. The lightest part of each of those layers will shine through. Now, next thing would be masking. Uh, and for the first, the first layer here, I'm gonna put a, a black mask. I'm actually gonna put a full black mask to take off all of the light. And I'm going to, uh, to paint in the light myself with a brush. So that'll be the side. Take a look at that one. We'll add a mask to that. And we'll select the brush and we'll use a white brush and just paint this in for now. We can fine tune this a little later. A little bit more there. May make a selection around the car, at least some portions of the car, just so I can get some, uh, some nice selection, especially in the background. Now this is the top and we can paint that in. You can see it's kind of, uh, it's kind of bleeding over. Just if I use uh, a soft brush, it will bleed over into the background, which I do not want. So I'm gonna use the pen tool, make a selection. I don't really need to go around the whole car for this. I could, but it's really for the top is the most important. We'll render that. We'll use a feather of 0.3 and we'll use the brush to paint that in there. A lot easier, don't have to worry about the brush. If you use a soft brush, it's gonna bleed. If you use a, uh, a harder brush, uh, it's just gonna be way too obvious. So using the pen tool to make a selection makes that much easier. Painting on the side here and the front and just turning these, uh, these layers on and off so I can see what, uh, what kind of effect the brush is having. And on the back, we'll take a look here there's a little bit that goes into the back and I don't like that. So I'm just gonna paint this out. Again, I can use the pen tool to make a selection or I can uh, paint simply with the brush. And a little bit in the front. On and off, taking a look at the layers and the front layer. 
So the front layer here, we'll add a, uh, a black mask. Use a white brush and paint in the light in the front. And I can already notice there's a couple things I don't like. Uh, one thing, of course, uh, the bleed into the background. Probably should use the pen tool for this. But also the, uh, the wheel, the right wheel, you can see here. I don't really like that visible. It probably wouldn't be visible uh, from the light. So I'm going to use a pen tool, make a selection around this. Uh, another easy way to do this would be from the beginning of using the pen tool to make a selection around the entire car and then saving that selection. So you can recall that selection later and use that when you need to mask. Okay, so that looks pretty good so far. I'll probably go back and kind of fine tune that. Uh, we're gonna group these layers and we're gonna name this simply car. So I can go back to that later. Just keep the layers organized because there's gonna be uh, a couple more. And we're gonna start some of the, the cleanup of the image. And it's gonna be general cleanup. We're gonna do some cleanup on the car and we're gonna do some cleanup in the background as well. And we'll probably put those on two different layers just to make it easier. It's a couple little streaks and so we're gonna speed through this. There's a lot of little streaks uh, and actually a little bit of a mistake. You can see the, um, the ice light. It did have a little bit of, of light bleed, but it'll take some time to just get, get rid of that there. Could have taken another exposure, but we'll just paint that out. The vehicle is pretty clean. Uh, it was just recently clean, but of course with the ice light, it will pick up uh, pretty much every speck of, uh, of dirt. There's some water on the wheels. So again, speeding through this to make those selections, it does take time, um, but I uh, wanted to make sure the image is as clean as possible. Now, the next cleanup will be the background. There's some little things. One thing I want to take out is that monitor that's on the right side. That's quite distracting. Luckily, it's easy to get out with the dark background. I can just simply clone and paint into that spot there. So we're gonna speed through this as well. So I'm just kind of taking out that monitor and then there's some little blemishes, some reflections, uh, some things I just wanna take out. Uh, easy to take out and uh, add some more impact to the photo. So speeding through this, picking up all the little specks, some dirt, plenty of dirt uh, on the floor. Uh, some little blemishes on the car, some little specks of water and some reflections that are easy to get rid of that I don't want there. Now let's look up this car layer. Um, there's one thing I noticed uh, looking at this. This is the top. All right, let's use the pen tool. You can see a little bit of that bleeding over into the background. You can see the light doesn't look good at all. And again, this is probably where I should have used a, um, a selection around the whole car just so I could recall that selection later to make this masking easier and quicker. And we'll paint this out. No, oh, it's not on that layer. Yeah, let's try another one here. Yeah, it's on the front. So we'll paint that out. Okay, good, we'll zoom out. Now, one thing I noticed um, that I don't necessarily like is the front exposure is a little too exposed. Uh, it's definitely brighter than the rest of the car. I wanna make that a little more even. Uh, fortunately, with the mask, I kind of left some things in there, so I'll have to clean that up a little bit from that selection and on that layer. That's good. And now this next one, see this uh, kind of reflection that's on the bottom of the, uh, the grill of the car? I wanna make sure that's complete, so I'm using the pen tool to make my own little selection, and we'll feather that to 0.3, and we'll just paint that in with the color. And that's just to even it out, just so we have that reflection across the entire front, just to make it a bit cleaner. And that's it. Now this folder uh, we'll name it to clean up. Uh, now we're gonna do some, some color adjustments with this is kind of uh, our next step, uh, looking at a couple steps and what we're doing. The first one will be a curves adjustment. We'll brighten up the whites and we'll darken it a bit there. Give it a bit more contrast to the photo. At the end, I'm going to tweak the contrast, some of the saturation in the photo uh, when everything is complete. Next is a color balance. Now it is quite warm and I wanted to bring some coolness to the photo, especially in the shadows itself. 
And in the color balance, I'm going to add just one or two towards the blue to bring a little bit more blue to the shadows of the photo. That little reflection, I'll take that out back on the, uh, the background cleanup layer. And this is the power of having these layers, of course, going back, making sure you know what you're doing, what level you're, or what layer you're working on, and so on. And this color balance, I'm going to increase quite a bit. I'm going to put it up to probably quite a bit is three or four. It does make quite an impact on it. Now, let's go to the shadows, not the highlights. Curves on and off. Take a look. Let's increase this a little bit more in this curves layer. See what that looks like. Probably a little bit too much on and off. All right, that's good so far. So one thing I forgot to do is bring in the headlight layer uh, that I had taken because I wanted to get the headlights illuminated. Uh, and I did forget to bring that in initially. So I can easily bring that in, put it into my car layer, make a brand new layer, and mask out the portions I don't want. The good thing is this is an easy one. Uh, the only thing that was illuminated in the frame was the headlights itself. Next step is to bring in this flare. It's a light flare. I want a light source coming from the right of the photo. Uh, and I want that out of frame. So we'll adjust this. That's a, probably a bit too bright and too big. Rotate this just a bit. Uh, probably looks best little, probably a little lower than that. Okay, that's pretty good. Uh, control L to bring up levels. Bring a little brighter. And we'll bring down the... Uh, kind of the halo of it as well, just so it's not as intense. And I can always bring down the opacity on this, uh, on this flare as well. Drop that to zero, and we'll go up. Eh, 30 or 40 is probably good for this. All right, looking good so far. Um, back to cleanup. Let's put a new layer in here, a uh, smoke layer. Now what this is, um, I do like to put some smoke behind some of the photos, especially a light painted on, the, on a, um, a dark background, because it will make the car blend into the environment a little more. Sometimes this can be too intense. Sometimes it can be uh, just too much and look a little too fake. Uh, so I wanted to bring in just a bit of smoke, a little bit of, uh, of an atmosphere. And this is a very low smoke layer, probably on seven or 8% opacity just to bring in a bit more to the photo. This color balance, I'm gonna increase this five or six or so. Uh, and I'm actually gonna use this here because I wanna blend. I kind of going for um, a, a different look. Gonna go from a cool to a warmer tone in the same photo. So we'll blend that. All right, so pretty much done. There's two other things I brought in. Uh, there was a little bit more color. I wanted to bring some cool color to the left of the photo to make the, uh, the, the cool to the warm a little more pronounced, but also a final curves adjustment that will just decrease the contrast just a bit. It was a bit too much, a bit too dark, and I wanted to have that contrast layer to kind of mute the blacks a little bit. Thanks again, and I'll see you in the next video.